I shouldn't have had a heart attack. <laughs> I have uh, no family history. I belong to the gym and exercise three days a week. I walked. I'm a kayaker. We do snowshoeing in the winter. I, I'm really active and play with the kids, you know, just a very active person. Eat well, not, you know, you could always lose 10 pounds, but I don't have a huge amount of weight to lose. So I had ovarian cancer when I was 43 years old and went through chemo and big surgery and all that and recovered completely from that. And I thought if something happens to me, that would probably be what was going to happen. So I don't know, it wasn't on my radar screen at all. I got up and my habit is to do a little reading in the morning. So I was in my robe drinking a cup of coffee and reading. And I started getting a pressure achiness between my shoulder blades. And I had a history of back issues. So I thought, oh, it's probably just the way I'm sitting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I got up and moved around a little bit and, and it, it didn't help. And then I got a pain between my breasts and it wasn't around my whole chest. It was between the shoulder blades and between the breasts. And it was this heaviness, this pressure feeling. And so then I thought, oh, this is weird. So I got up and moved around again. And then <clears throat> I started getting nauseated. And I thought, oh, good grief, what is going on? So laid down on the couch, didn't help at all. And then I got kind of anxious, a little diaphoretic, you know, sweaty, hot and cold. And I was in the nursing field for 40 years. And I figured something is <laughs> wrong here. And I had my iPad and I looked up symptoms for a heart attack in a woman and well doggone it if most of them weren't on there. So I got Stephen and I said, you know, I might be having a heart attack. Just one look at her, I could tell that uh, I mean, she obviously was not feeling well. So it, was, uh, it wasn't a hard sell to be, you know, we need to go to the ER and get this checked out. Being a nurse, I should know you take some baby aspirin when that happens. Didn't even think about it. <laughs> so crazy when it's you, it's different. So on the way in, I called the hospital and told them we were coming. And then we were talking and I said, you know, if this is nothing, we're not gonna tell anybody that we went in. And <laughs> I'd been working so long and, you know, in OBGYN primarily, so women came in in false labor, they all, were always embarrassed about it. So that's what we thought, well, we'll see what's going on before we let anybody know. And uh, then we arrived at the emergency room. And then they started, you know, the EKG, the x-rays, the lab work, the enzyme tests to determine if you had a heart attack and all that kind of thing. We were talking, we were nervous. <laughs> we were holding hands, hoping that everything would be okay and wondering, should we tell the kids or not? And then Tony, our son called while we were in the emergency room and I picked it up and I don't know why, but I did. And of course, hear his voice and start to cry. <laughs> and it's, mom, what's going on? And so I'm going, oh, I can't talk. So uh, Stephen was talking to him. And uh, our grandson happened to be in the room and he knew something was going on and he heard that grandma was sick and we're very close. And he went into his room and just, Grandma can't be sick, Grandma can't be sick, you know, it was just heartbreaking to hear that. Basically what she had described her symptoms at at that point was um, chest pain in her back um, that kind of uh, radiated out into the shoulders. Um, she had some uh, sweating and then she went on Google and looked at her symptoms and basically with that she had the first, the top hit that came back was coronary artery disease. Um, and we find that a lot in women where it's not always this 
mid-sternal chest pain that radiates into the jaw and to the left arm. And basically we drew enzymes on her and found that uh, she had an elevated troponin, which is a very specific protein that's released in the heart when there's damage. She also had a little bit of EKG change, um, but she was stable at the time also, so she wasn't having any chest pain. And then we basically uh, took her to the heart catheterization lab and what we do is we access the right wrist or the right groin and slide a tube up into the heart and eject dye. And we look at it at that point to see if there's any blockages. And she did have some blockage. Um, she had some unstable plaques. And they were very distal, meaning far down in the heart. My son and his wife, Rachel, and Stephen were gone. And uh, the nurse came in and said the enzyme level showed that I had had a heart attack. And, and I, I was still thinking, eh, this should be something else. But um, no, it was, and, and I kind of lost it for a minute there, and she was wonderful. She just sat with me and held my hand, and then my family all came in, and I told them I had a heart attack. <laughs> so at that point, we recommended you know medical management, and we and we treat with statin therapy which is an um, anti-cholesterol drug, basically. It works in the liver. And when we decrease the cholesterol, then we decrease um, inflammation in the artery. And that would be from a, an acute basis like hers, and also just on an outpatient basis. We have people coming into the clinic where that's what we're looking at doing, and we're trying to stabilize plaques, basically. Well, I think everybody was in shock. Well, it's not something you expect to hear, as Nancy described her history, that would be about the last thing I'd think of in terms of a medical issue for her. Uh, and of course, when you hear heart attack, it's, well, how is this going to be playing out the rest of this minute, this hour, this day, uh, and, you know, going forward. Uh, but as time goes by, you, you know, the, more, the news was encouraging, you know, right along almost from the beginning. With her, we sent her to cardiac rehab, and we do that to monitor her. Um, going forward for the future so we can monitor symptoms and see how she does. We want to control the risk factors. Like I said, you can't control your age, you can't control your gender or anything like that or even your family history, but we can control her blood pressure, we can control her cholesterol, we can try to control her eating habits, which are all things that um, contribute to her specific uh, um, lifestyle, basically. I'm, I'm doing real well, yes. After I left the hospital and I was cleared to start cardiac rehab. I did that and then uh, am back at my gym and doing that. And then I developed this back problem. So I've really had to cut down on my exercises, but as soon as that's resolved, I'll be back again. I knew about Go Red for years just from, again, being in the medical profession and I had my little red dress and uh, we always were encouraged to make sure women identified you know heart problems but I was never involved in it at all um, and then when I had my heart attack I was asked to share my story and now I am so this group of people that I have met are absolutely outstanding their enthusiasm and dedication to get the word out about heart health is just inspiring. Number one, it can happen to anybody. You don't have to have the big red flag that you're at risk for a heart disease because it can happen to anybody. And number two, listen to your body. I've always believed that, that's so important and I knew something wasn't right. I could have ignored it very easily, thinking, eh, it's probably just this. And instead of having a mild heart attack, I could have had a really big one next time. So I, th I think those are the main things. Know, know what's going on in your body and pay attention. The afternoon that I had my heart attack and had been admitted to the hospital and was in the bed, the kids had called and said, we're gonna come up and see you. And I thought, okay, what can I do so that grandma doesn't look so scary? So 
I put on my sweats and my shirt and I, I knew about when they were coming so I walked down the hall and I met them in the hall and I tried to look normal. And we uh, were sitting on the bed then in my room and uh, Will, William and Genevieve were sitting there and, and holding my hand and it was pretty, pretty precious. And then, how do you feel, Grandma? How do you feel? And I said, you know, I feel so much better when you're here holding my hand. You're making my heart happy. And Will said, well, I'll just sit here, Grandma, and as long as you want me to. <laughs> it was so precious. And Genevieve is holding my other hand, and she's, she was six, and she's just, like, what can I do? The number one thing in my life is my family. And I have, a, I have an optimistic outlook on life. That's just who I am. And I have a family that really treasures me. And I just want women to be aware there are people that need you and love you and you would be really missed. <laughs> if you weren't there and didn't take care of yourself. So I think that's it. I'm very optimistic about what lies ahead.